Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. Real projects for real homeowners with real solutions. Information and inspiration on improving your home from professional remodeler Danny Lipford. Welcome to the show this week. You know one of the best things you can do to the interior of your home to really improve its appearance? add some more molding. I'll show you how you can combine certain pieces of stock molding to really get that custom look. And you might be surprised how easy it is to upgrade the look of the doors on the interior of your home. Don't go anywhere. We got a great show for you. Welcome back to the show. Now stock moldings really can improve the look of the interior of your home in several different areas. One area around the fireplace mantle. Now this homeowner used regular stock moldings, $75 worth of materials and a few hours of time to create this great looking mantle. Now I've seen mantles like this cost as much as $400. Now another area of the home that you can really improve is around your windows, especially if your home was built in the last 30 or 40 years. Now it may look just like this one with what we call a drywall return, where your drywall comes along, returns back into the jam, and has a finished edge. Now builders found that you could really approach a window like this much less expensive than trimming it out with wood. But I think you'll agree, it just doesn't look as good unless it has that nice wood look all the way around the perimeter of the window. Now to do that, it's really very simple. We'll take stock moldings, wrap the window, put a new seal and apron in, it'll make a big difference. We'll start out by clearing out the area, getting a few tools. Now the trim I'll be using around the windows is called a colonial casing. It's readily available at any home center. It's two and a quarter wide and this particular molding I've already primed and painted which is always a good idea because once I complete the installation of the trim, one more coat and I'm all complete. Now on the bottom part of the window opening, I'm replacing the existing window sill or commonly called stool with a piece of window stool. You can see it's about five and a quarter inches wide. It has a little profile on this side which will give it a nice finished look on the front of the opening. Of course, the first thing I need to do is to remove the old stool and take the needed measurements. I start removing the window stool and apron by scoring the caulking. Then, if you can see any nail heads, set them through the stool, which makes it a lot easier to pry it up. Now, we're replacing the existing window stool because it didn't extend out enough on each side of the window to accommodate the width of the new side trim we'll be installing. Now, after it's out, remove the casing piece that serves as the apron. I then measured the width of the opening for the new stool and checked the opening at the top to make sure it's the same then back to the saw to measure and cut the new stool and apron pieces. Now I'm using both a motorized miter saw and a jigsaw to make all of the cuts. I then cut the top casing piece with a 45 degree cut on each end. The first piece I nail in place is the stool followed by the apron piece. Then I set the nail slightly below the surface of the wood. Next, the top trim piece is nailed in place. Okay, now that we have the top trim piece in, our stool, our aprons complete, now I can take my measurements for each side for the last two pieces of trim that I need. Now you may notice on this particular piece of trim, I've left about an eighth of an inch reveal or offset between the corner of the drywall and the edge of the molding itself. The reason for this is most of the time on any door or window casings, you'll see an offset like that. Also, if there's a little waviness in the sheetrock, you won't notice it by doing it in this way. Now, I'll measure from the outside, or what we call the long point, seventy-three and an eighth, and then, of course, check it with the other side to make sure they built the house right, and we're looking pretty good there. 
The side trim pieces are cut and carefully nailed into place, making sure the nails are away from the edge of the opening. Next, I puttied up all the nail heads and caulked the cracks around the stool. Now, to ensure the inside surface of the drywall will look like wood, I sanded it smooth. After a short drying time for the caulking, it's time to paint the final coat. Okay, we have one window complete and one more to go, and I think you'll agree, this window looks a lot better than this one, and we only spent $15 in materials and a couple hours of time. Now stay with us when we come back. I'll show you how we're taking regular stock moldings, combining them to create multi-stage crown molding. Crown molding can make a big difference in any room in your home. Now to show you how big of a difference it can make, look at this room, then look at this dining room. Kind of looks bare in here. Now when you're choosing crown molding for your home, you need to consider how large of a room that the crown molding will be going in and how high the ceilings are because you want to pick the right size molding for the size room. Now here's four very common types of crown molding that you'll find at any home center. Now this one runs about 30 cents a foot. It's called bed molding. It's about an inch and a half wide. Now you see this a lot on the outside of homes running around the overhang area. Now the size we just looked at in the living room is this size. It's two and a half, runs 40 cents a foot, and for most homes that have eight foot ceilings, it's just the right size. Now the next size up is a three and a half inch crown molding, 65 cents a foot, a little bit wider, very similar in profile. And then the real big one, five inch molding is actually 60 cents a foot. Now to give you an idea in what I just spoke about in, in the size moldings, if you have a room like this and you try to put this molding up, it's just really too small. The type of molding that was chosen by the homeowners, the two and a half, is really fine, looks pretty good. But they could have stepped up to a slightly larger molding, which is the three and a half. You can see that really looks good, especially when you see the contrast or the comparison with the door molding here. Then, if they had decided to step up to the five inch molding, that's a little big, almost makes the room a little top heavy. But now something that's been taking place over the last few years is combining crown moldings with other moldings that you just don't traditionally use around the ceiling area. Here's a good example. Now this is a base cap molding that traditionally is used in conjunction with a one by six or a one by eight, that you use it for your baseboard and that caps it off real nicely. But if you use that and combine it with a crown molding like this with that, then sand this area that's your drywall just like we did the window casing earlier. Then paint from this point all the way down to this point. It just looks like one nice large piece of crown molding. Now you can also take a piece of baseboard. This is one that is commonly called New Orleans base. It's five and a half inches wide, has a real nice profile on it, and you take this, put it right up to the ceiling, upside down, then you take a crown molding, in this case again, the three and a half, nail it right on top of it, caulk it, paint it, it looks like one big piece of molding. Now you can also combine other types of moldings with crown molding to really make some impressive pieces. Now we've mocked up a few pieces of molding here to give you an example of combining these moldings and what it can look like. Now this is a piece of three and a half inch crown with two pieces of four and a half inch baseboard. All of this put together costs you about a dollar and 65 cent per lineal foot for the materials. Now to step up to a larger look, five and a half inch piece of crown, two five and a half inch pieces of New Orleans base to create a large piece of molding like this. This will cost you about $2.65 per lineal foot for the materials. Of course, you're going to have to pay that trim carpenter a little extra because he has to make it all the way around the room at least three times. Now, large moldings like this are commonly used in large areas like the two-story foyers that you see in a lot of homes or just very large rooms. Other moldings are commonly used in specialty ceiling situations where you have bump-ups or recess-type ceilings and this will really highlight those features that you may have in your home. Well, so far this week, we've looked at improving the windows around your home by installing wood trim and what's involved in crown molding. 
Now let's take a look at another home where we've helped some homeowners there update their home, including changing their wood interior smooth doors to a very nice panel door. It's a lot easier and a lot less expensive than you might think. Now there are a number of things that you can do, very simple things to the interior of your home that can really make a big difference. Now we've already gotten a good start in this area of the home by installing a pre-finished hardwood floor. Also, we've upgraded our moldings around most of the doors that really make a difference. And over in the corner, the homeowner had installed a new granite countertop here on the wet bar, also new sink, new faucet. Then, to save the cabinetry that they had in place, they had the cabinet maker put in new cabinet doors that are raised panel doors and later the plumber will be in to install an ice maker and the painter will be back to touch everything up. Really has made a big difference in this area of this home but it also made the homeowners realize how bad the smooth doors look. This is just a what they call a Luan holla core door and really needed an upgrade on this, so they went to the home center and chose a very common six panel door that we have here. Now one of the things you wanna think about when you're selecting the doors for your house, first of all, you need to measure, of course, that the width is right and the height is right on the door so that you have no problems with the existing opening. Then check on the thickness of the door. Most interior doors will be an inch and three eighths Exterior doors are usually an inch and three quarters or even two inches in thickness. Then, to install the doors, a fairly simple type of carpentry work, but it does require a little bit of skill and a little bit of time. Now, you can take your time on it and install just one a day or as you have a little bit of time in installing the doors, but the first step is to remove the door by popping out the hinge pins. To remove the hinge pins, use a nail set or large nail and hammer. Then leave the half hinges on the existing door so that you can measure the spacing of the hinges on the new door. Now if you're replacing several doors, you may want to build a door stand like we have here that makes it very easy to work on the door and install the hinges. Now if your hinges are old, this is a great time to replace them. Now these hinges were replaced just a couple years ago and still look fine. Now after the hinges were removed from the old door, measurements were taken for the new door. The door is placed in the door stand and the recessed areas are laid out. The hinges are recessed approximately a sixteenth of an inch or the thickness of the hinges. Now most carpenters use a router for creating this recessed area, but it's also very easy just to use a sharp chisel and a hammer. Now after that's all complete, attach the hinge halves to the door and it's time to place the new door in the old jam. Now once it's in the jam, reinstall the hinge pins and check the swing of the door. Now with a new door in place, it's time to drill the large hole that's needed for the doorknob. Now it's two and an eighth inch in diameter, so we'll have to use a hole saw, which makes it very important for some correct measurements. Now since the strike hole from the old doorknob is already there, we simply mark its location to know where to position the new doorknob holes. Now we're using a hole saw and a half inch drill for this drilling project. Next, we drill the plunger hole with a 7 8 inch paddle bit. Now we'll hold off on installing the doorknob until the painters had a chance to prime and paint the door. Now it's really made a difference in how this is going to look, especially after it gets painted, and it's taken about two hours to install the door and it's cost around $90 for the door itself but it's really made a big difference in upgrading this area of the house. Well, as you can see, there's a number of simple things that you can do inside your home that'll make a real big difference. Now, some of them require a little bit of a skill level. So you may decide to go to the home center and buy your materials, bring them home, do your priming and painting, then let a trim carpenter drop by to install everything. But if you decide to do it yourself, make sure you allow plenty of time buy the right tools, and really enjoy improving your home. I'm Danny Lipford. We'll see you next week. It's time to pick up a few tricks of the trade from Danny and home repair expert Joe Truini in this week's Simple Solution. Now, painting your walls and trim in an area like this that only has an eight-foot ceiling is very easy. It gets a little more complicated when you get to the stairway. 
Joe, I see you're working off some scaffolding here. Yeah, how you doing, Danny? Doing good. Yeah, what we have here is a pretty typical staircase where we've got about a 12 or 13 foot high ceiling. So to paint it using just one extension ladder would be a bit of a hassle because you'd be moving it all around. So what we have here is actually we're using two ladders. Using one extension ladder here at the base of the stairs where we place it against the step so it won't slip. Yeah, there's no way that'll slip being tucked in behind the steps like that. No, it's locked like in there pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now on this end, you'll see I put some padding just to keep from scratching the paint job. Oh, that's great. Now on this end, at the top of the landing, we used a, a step ladder. And we just clamped the plank. It's a two by 12. We just clamped it to the ladder, keep it from shifting around. And then you can adjust this up or down. Now you can actually even not even use that ladder, I guess, and lay it right on the landing or on some of the steps. Right, depending on how tall you are or how high your ceiling is, you could put it right on the landing. I wouldn't put it on the step, though, because it's pretty shallow and it could slip off. If you put it on the landing, just let it extend out a good three or four feet. Okay, now this is a fairly typical stairway, but I've seen some that are really long and, and large, and you may have to put that actual ladder well away from right. where you're actually painting. What about the support of that? Well, here we have about eight feet, which is plenty. This is plenty sturdy enough for one person to walk on. Anything beyond eight feet, I'd support it with a vertical brace. Just stand a two by four underneath this and bring it right down off the stairs. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product. Now one thing that I really like on the outside of a home is landscape lighting. If it's properly installed and designed the right way, boy, it can really add to your home. Now in the past, you've only had a couple choices. You can go with a plastic type inexpensive fixture runs anywhere from $10 to $15, or you have to step way on up to the designer series that can be $200. Well, now there's some middle ground. It's called the Canterbury line from Malibu. Now, you can see right away the distinctive designs that Malibu has put into this particular line, and all of these are made out of either brass, copper, or even leaded glass. Now they have traditional designs in terms of the down lights and also the fixtures that allow you to hot spotlight any of your special plants you have out in your yard. And the nice thing about it is these will integrate into any other system that you have. So that if you have some of the other systems in your yard already, you can use these to replace them or tie them in together if you have a large enough transformer. Now the cost on these run from $25 to $55, so it's a lot more affordable to anyone's budget. And with 17 different designs to choose from, you're sure to find one that fits your personality and the architectural styling of your home. Now let's go outside for Around the Yard with Danny and lawn and garden expert Barbara Katz. Homeowners love fresh produce, especially tomatoes. You just see tomatoes planted everywhere. But Barbara, when I plant tomatoes, they look really good, just like these, but only for a couple weeks, and boom, they kill right over. Oh, Danny, you know what you've got is uh, tomato cutworms. Hmm. So what you need to do when you plant them is just get some tin foil and cut a strip about two inches wide, wrap it around the stem, and make sure you go about an inch into the soil. But what you're doing is giving it a little protective collar and your plants should grow beautifully then. Okay, what about fertilizer? I mean, I know there's all kinds of different fertilizer. What's the kind I need to buy to take care of my tomatoes? Well, if I can just give you one simple key. You know, all the fertilizers have three numbers. And the first number, which is nitrogen, makes everything grow incredibly leafy, huge leaves. But it's the second two numbers which encourage the flowers and the roots. So that's what you want. You want those last two numbers to be much, much higher than the first number. And if, if you can just remember that, that will help you with all of your tomato plants. Okay, what about uh, watering? Do they like a, a lot of water, a little water, no water? What's best for that? Well, I mean, like, you know, like anything, they need water. But for tomatoes especially, it's critical to give, it, to give them consistent water because what will happen is if they get very thirsty and then you give them a sudden flood of water, you'll see the fruit actually swells and then it splits and that's really disappointing so just try and give them consistent water and give them a little bit of fertilizer and you'll have tomatoes all summer long Danny <laughs> Hey, 
thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.